Because a tree might look really good, but if it's only got 10 years left of reasonable life expectancy, then there may be some other factor that means that you maybe you remove that tree because there's a greater public benefit. But to have a greater public benefit than a massive mature pine tree, which is pumping out oxygen, which is collecting rainwater, which is reducing, um, reducing flood risk, which is helping to moder moderate pollution, which is doing all these ecosystem services, as well as giving joy and pleasure to all the community around it, to have a greater public benefit, which would mean you would remove such a huge tree that's still got 200 years left, it's really quite hard to imagine. I mean, well, it, it, it is impossible. It, 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 it's very hard to think of a, a, a public benefit that could be met by me removing this tree. And so then the question is, well, what is the benefit? And of course, there is a benefit, and that benefit is to profit, is to money, is to the corporate interests who push this sort of agenda. And I'm going to talk about the tree, and I'm going to talk about the ecology of these trees, and I'm going to talk about why they're important. But I just need to say a little bit about politics, because this is all about politics. Um, I want to commend the group who have defended this tree. Um, they've been threatened with a High Court injunction. Well, not just threatened with a High Court injunction, there is a High Court injunction. Um, and that's an incredibly draconian approach for a local authority to take over a matter like this. And what we're seeing more and more of is more draconian, more authoritarian approaches towards defending the rights of private companies and of capital to enforce their will on the world. And it's insane. We, we are in the middle of a climate crisis. We are in the middle of a mass extinction. We desperately need old trees and what they represent to protect us and the future of the planet. It's not complicated. These things are vital. The flats that may or may not get built next to it are not vital. People need homes and people should have homes. But we still have thousands of people homeless. It's not a question of the fact that this building would solve homelessness in Hackney. It won't even solve the, the a tenth or a hundredth of the people on the housing list. And so there are viable solutions to what is purportedly the benefit of removing this tree, which don't involve removing this tree. And just be absolutely clear that the people who have defended this tree up to date are local heroes and they need our respect and our admiration because without them this tree would not be here. This tree could have been felled without anyone really noticing. And I have to say to my show, I didn't really know this tree was here. I've lived in Hackney 30 years and I love the trees of Hackney. But because it's a street tree, because it's on the edge of the borough up here, I've never really noticed it. And I was touched to the point of almost tears when I saw this tree for the first time because I was very fearful we would lose this tree. And to lose a tree of this magnificence at this moment in time would be completely insane. So great respect to those who have defended this tree. There is a chance that defence may prove successful in that there is an opportunity for the council to step back and consider an alternative proposal and I very much hope they will do that because there is win-win here. Okay, Barclay Homes may not make quite so many millions that year but even that's a win, let's face it. Um, so, so to talk a little bit about the tree and about tree musketeers and the importance of trees I think it's great, you've obviously got great local support and this is really what this sort of campaign is about. It's grassroots, it's based in the community and it's about people who've grown up and care about this tree. Um, so a little bit about London Plains. They are a little bit unusual in that they don't exist in nature without us, in that they are hybrids. They are hybrid between the Oriental Plain, the Plain of uh, the Orient and Eastern Europe and the Occidental Plain, the Western Plain of the Americas. And no one's absolutely sure where the first London Plain came from, and therefore there are some debates about what it should really be called. So its scientific name is either Platinus Hispanica or Platinus Acerifolia. So Acerifolia meaning leaves like Acer, so it's got leaves a little bit like a sycamore. Um, but the, the most widely accepted name is Platinus Hispanica, which rather suggests it came from uh, Iberia. There are people who claim it came from Oxford, 
um, and that the first cross was in Oxford. Where the way in which these trees often originate is by accident. And you, you basically, you end up with Victorians or pre-Victorians moving around the world, moving plants around the world, and someone plants an oriental plane next to a western plane, and the two just get together. Um, and you end up with a hybrid. And the thing about hybrids is they're generally infertile. So the amazing thing about London planes, although we see hundreds of them in London, they are infertile. You don't get London plane seedlings. Or rather, you very rarely get London plane seedlings. Because as with everything in nature, nothing quite follows the rules. So the rule is, if something can reproduce itself, it's a true species. Because that's what species are. They're able to propagate. If it's a hybrid, it can't reproduce itself. Because if it could, it would be a true species. So this is a hybrid, but some of the seeds don't know that. So about 1% or less than 1% of the seeds will germinate. And we have managed to germinate a few. Eugene, who's here, who propagates loads of trees for us, has had a few um, propagated, and we have planted them in parts. So it's an unusual tree because it's, it's, a, it's an accident of history. It's a, it's a, and one of the consequences of that accident is hybrids. Hybrids almost always don't happen. If you try and get two things to hybridize, they will very rarely do that. Basically because over the millennia of evolution, if they were gonna do that, they would have done it by now. 